Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is Dean Tenney, a.k.a. the Series 7 Guru, coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. And that empty space, at some point you will see the test geek himself, Brian Lee, managing member of Test Geek Exam Prep, LLC. Uh, we do these uh, live streams every Tuesday. Uh, Brian is our very special guest. He you know, sometimes has better things to do, like hockey games and significant others. But uh, for the most part, he's here most of the time. Uh, we always like to start, if you're new with us, we always like to start with debrief. And then we like to answer any questions that were sent in early. So uh, when you are answering a question or you know, tell us where you're from and where you're joining us, it will help us if in the question you tell us what exam you're taking, what your question is. That way we can pull you out of the chat a little easier. If I miss you, uh, it's not intentional, I promise you. So just put it back in there. I know sometimes when I'm uh, doing time stamping for the replays, uh, I sometimes notice that I've missed somebody's question. So uh, don't take it personal, just put it back in there and it's, uh, we'll get to it one way or another. We do end in time, on time. And tonight we do have a live stream uh, Zoom session overtime. It's completely booked. It's capped at 10 folks. And if you want to participate in that, next week I've opened up a, another live stream. Uh, as I said, we like to start with debrief. Nothing surprising here, I don't think, Brian. Uh, we got how many um, months to make an IRA transfer? Uh, I would think that would be expressed as 60 days, That's not right. not months. Um, the amount for a day trade must have in the account is 25 grand is the minimum for a day trader. Uh, complaints are a four-year record. Nothing surprising here. Now, but by the way, when we're doing debrief, just remember every draw is a little different. So I wouldn't count on the magic of somebody else took the test and told you what they saw. You know, you should learn this stuff. But that being said, uh, retail communications requiring a distribution, pre-distribution approval. Uh, updates to U4s, very test will have to be done in 30 days. So if you have a a uh, no answer that is uh, now a yes answer that should be amended in 30 days. And that's your responsibility to do so. Uh, listen, these are some of these are give me, give me some I mean, layups, accredited investor. Got to know that one, two, three. Uh, inverted yield curve is when short term rates are higher than long term rates. I'm surprised that shows up on a seven. I would expect that more to be on an SIE. I mean, I believe people that give me debriefs. I'm just telling you that I think that's low probability is a, is a seven question. Uh, pre-refunding bonds. Uh, yeah, you should know that we should quote yield to call on a pre-refunded bond because you're not going to get to hold it to maturity, right? If it's been pre-refunded, that means when the call date, uh, call protection period's over, it's going to get called. Uh, moral obligation bonds are a type of revenue bond, not GO. You know, I always joke when I'm teaching class, would you prefer I be morally obligated to show up tomorrow or generally obligated? <laughs> morally obligated means we could come up with some philosophical reason about why I don't need to be here, right? Overlapping debt, you know, overlapping debt is when a city and a county, for example, and school districts share some of the same geographic boundaries. We sometimes refer to that as coterminous, but the point is the tax burden on the uh, the residents. Uh, sinking fund, a funded debt I haven't seen in a while, but you know, some debt is a funded debt means there is a sinking fund. Unfunded debt means there's not a sinking fund. I don't know what the question was. If I was going to write a question about that, be sinking fund would typically be better credit quality than a uh, bond that doesn't have a sinking fund. Uh, no surprise difference between geos and revenues. Highly recommend you take a sheet of paper, you fold it in half. One side, write all the terms associated with geos. The other, all the terms associated with revenue bonds. Uh, most important, a suitability question for muni bond. I'd say tax bracket or tax burden, wouldn't you, Brian? Yep. Negotiated underwritings when issuer selects the underwriter. Uh, interest rate offerings, the 80% rule, remember that's rule 147. It's a safe harbor exemption under 33. Uh, calculate the current yield. You should be able to do this. I have nothing here that's really out of the ordinary so far. Uh, I've been seeing, Brian, this is the second time somebody's told me this. Uh, I've said for a long time that I haven't had anybody tell me they've had to calculate number of days of accrued interest. But I have had people now reporting that they've had to actually calculate the number of days of accrued interest. This uh, test taker is reporting that uh, he also had to come up with the dollar amount uh, with the accrued interest added on. I, you know, uh, I take these debriefs at face value, but I think that's sometimes I think people do a lot of practice questions and then they, in their brain, they, you know, it, it locks on that they got that. I'm not so sure. I, I believe that. Right. I'm not calling this person a liar. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> if I were you, I wouldn't worry about it. I guess is what I'm saying. 
Dollar cost averaging, absolutely. Tax consequence of variable annuity, no, no surprise. Slobs over bliss, uh, what do you use to stop a loss? Either a buy stop or sell stop, no surprise. Uh, parity calculation, no surprise. Uh, bond is being called, what should you do? Well, you, <laughs> you don't have a choice. If the bond's being called, you got to turn in the bond. The only time that gets tricky is, and I don't have this in the debrief, if it's a convertible bond and whether you should let them call the bond or whether you should convert, and that's called a forced conversion. At that point, uh, you might have to do some judgment about what would be the better uh, course of action. Uh, leveraged ETF, uh, two times a leveraged ETF. Brian has a great practice question in his Desk Geek Series 7 practice exam on this. Uh, it's, you know, it's a spot on. So if you don't have Brian's uh, Test Geek uh, PDF practice exam, you can get it for 20 bucks. You can watch it on the channel and you can get the all in. You can get the videos and everything. But his practice exams are, I think, the best. Uh, filler kill order. Remember, filler kill, you want it all, you want it now. Yeah, otherwise, kill it. Cumulative preferred. Remember, cumulative preferred goes into arrears. Uh, account transfer, ACAT, one day to validate, three days to transfer. Um, depletion is for a natural wasting resource. So that's a partnership. Uh, memory aids, uh, they had to use Epic and Derp, no surprise. Uh, head and shoulders, I don't know. I think, Eric, you were asking me about head and shoulders, I think. Head and shoulders test question is a signal of a reversal. And so the regular head and shoulders is the end of the bullish and beginnings of the bearish trend. Uh, this test taker had an inverted head and shoulders pattern, which is, again, a signal of reversal. In this case, inverted, end of the bearish, beginning of the bullish. Uh, minimum maintenance on margin, 25% long, 30% short. Uh, purchasing power, I had to do one calculation of purchasing power, SMA. Uh, leaps, very decimal leap is, remember, long-term equity appreciation or anticipation uh, security, potential security. Who cares? The test question is technically 39 months, in practice, 30 months. Main point, test point, more than a year. So the only thing option contract that can go more than a year is a leap, and it's the only time you could possibly qualify for a long-term capital gain. And that would be to buy a leap and hold it for be a rest for more than 12 months. Uh, I could also ask you to kind of recognize that by the premium. Like I show you some premiums and say, which one is probably a leap? And it's like, you got a premium of five, eight, 11, and it's 22. You go, oh man, the 22 must be a leap. Because remember, longer term option contracts always have greater premiums. Uh, identifying a credit spread with missing premiums, no surprise, right? A credit spread would be when you have more money in than out. So that's Selling the lower strike call or selling the higher strike put. Uh, bullish spread, cost basis, uh, break even. No surprise. No surprise. Uh, UIT show up quite a bit. Passive, you know, passive management, professional selection. So we have professional selection of the assets, but passive management. Okay, let's see. I think that's pretty much uh, the Series 7 debrief. Uh, remember, you're taking a 65 debrief for you, June 20, uh, 12th. Decreases 70%. Brian and I have a podcast, the Geek and Guru, the Guru uh, podcast. Our first episodes are on the 65. We have episode one, two, and three will be premiering tomorrow. And I think, Brian, what's that going to be six episodes we're doing on that that podcast? I think we agreed that we were going to add yeah, that. I think it's one for June 12th. Yeah. yeah, when they change the content specification. So that last episode will be the changes uh, in the new test specifications. Oh, I'm um, already hearing the rumors flying. <laughs> yes. If you if you hear urban myths, please check with us because, <laughs> you know, yeah, you hear crazy things and, you know, uh, people are that. Uh, we have a free live stream overtime tonight, and I also, also offer you free office hours if you're a paid alumni. So that's uh, Wednesday, and the easiest way to access the free office hours is to uh, purchase a class. Uh, I haven't reloaded with classes yet on the uh, site, so there are none available right now. Uh, but we asked the free live stream is for anybody. And like I said, I just opened up for next Tuesday. This Tuesday, after this, we take a 15-minute break. And some of us reconvene for a Zoom session. And then we put it up as a replay. So you can want to check that out. You can go to the playlist for replays. And you can see what we do in both the live streams and the office hours. Uh, my ca Kaplan schedule is Series 7, May 8th through 10th. And uh, 66, May 31st through June 2nd. You get a 10% discount code is Guru10 at checkout. And uh, Kaplan has asked me to teach a nine and another 66. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that yet, but I might have a couple more Kaplan classes. Uh, we end our uh, thing after we answer your questions. I think Aaron's got a couple in the queue. 
Once we answer all the questions, we do a drawing at the end for a coaching call. The coaching call we're drawing for tonight will be 4.15 next Tuesday. It's recorded, shared with other test takers. If you win the drawing, you have to claim that by email within one hour of the drawing. It's not a floating contingent holiday. It looks like I need to fix the gmail.com there, but uh, best way to access the channel is through the series playlist. If you go try to find a video, it's almost impossible. There's coming up on 500 videos. So go to your series playlist, whatever exam you're taking, and then it's in suggested watch order. That's how you find it. That's the, I think, best free supplement to your paid study materials. Uh, the best paid supplement is the guy on the right hand of the screen, Brian, the test geek, his uh, stuff. He gives us a 20% discount on his products, his series. Uh, it comes in about 100 bucks for an entire video class and uh, PDF, which has some quick notes on them or class notes. And then I told you that really great uh, practice exam. And you can find that at uh, Test Geek Exam Prep at teachable.com and then Brian's email and we'll show that to you. All right, let's get into the comments and see what we got going on here. I'm gonna start at the top. Hey Dean, hey Erica. Can you explain what I need to know uh, about the yield curve and head and shoulders? I think I just took care of that, I think. So remember I said head and shoulders, you need to know that uh, it's a signal of a reversal, Erica. Yield curve, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the yield curve on the seven, but yield curve is when the normal yield curve is short-term rates are higher than long-term rate, or short-term rates are lower than long-term rates. Inverted yield curve would be short-term rates are higher, and it's a you know a bearish economic indicator, leading economic indicator. I, I think you're more likely to see that on SIE than seven. Brian's drawing a little picture there of a head and shoulders pattern. Whoop, let me get Brian some real estate here. There we go. Remember, God, this is going to date us, Dean. Remember the days when you used to get a little diagram booklet? When you oh, yes. I had somebody accidentally walk out with that, Brian. Put it on. <laughs> Put it on. It was called your exhibit book. They give you these exhibits. And they would have a head and shoulders would yeah. be one of the exhibits. I wish yeah. I would have kept that. I wish I would have kept that. I, would have been I know, me on. too. I didn't yeah. want to touch it, to be honest. With I, you. Same here. I said, you know what? Uh, I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> Uh, Jennifer, I think you're going to do fine. You're executing a dedicated, disciplined, organized study effort. And please note on the sequence of her scores. I, I'm assuming you put those in the sequence, Jennifer. Uh, 68, 71, you're going to have some days where you drop a little bit. It looks like she dropped a point. But then look, new plateau, 74, 76. So that's exactly what you kind of want to see. Yeah. And like I say, don't beat yourself up too much if you have a dip as you work to your new plateau. So uh, Jennifer, I, I can't see any problems. Just keep uh, keep keep grinding. You know, it's tough when you're getting negative feedback. I was talking to a guy today and you got to get past the attitude of like when you were in school and you need a 90%, that's an A and that, you know, a 76, oh my God, it's a C minus. I've never been a C minus person. No, it's simply pass or fail. So the perfect score is the minimum you need to pass, right? So I tell people exactly the same thing. I said, it's not like college. We're not looking for a GPA. We're looking for the P. That's right. The bat of the pass. One thing I would add to Jennifer is make sure you work on your weak areas in between those practice finals. Yeah. You want to be always laying base. So give yourself time to circle back and continue to lay base. Uh, Brian and I, you know, have a little bit of a disagreement about frequency of practice tests, but we both agree you shouldn't be just stacking practice tests on practice tests to try and learn. They're, they're used, we agreed uh, for a mark to mark it where you're at, right? So you can see where you need the remediation and take action. So I think people do air Jennifer on waiting too long to get a practice test. You know, I'm acting as a fake accountability partner for somebody. And I think just means I can't hire you or fire you. But, you know, I said, when am I going to see a practice test? You know, it's been a while now and you should have had enough base now to kind of take a mark. We don't really care what it is, but, you know, we got to find that out. And I think sometimes people wait too long and then there's not enough time for course correction. I so, think those performance trackers is the best thing that came down the pike. Yeah, Kaplan has got a great performance tracker. It helps you identify areas of remediation. Uh, I'm becoming even more aggressive, Brian, that the Kaplan QBank is the best. So uh, you, know, you can get it as a supplement. You can get it as a supplement, particularly if you're using like a pass perfect, for example, it gets in the weeds quite a bit. I mean, they get into some stuff. I would use your, your whether it's, you know, Brian only has that one great practice exam. But the reason I have another QBank is just to get confirmation of test issues. You know, if you see something in Kaplan you don't see anywhere else or vice versa, 
you kind of go, okay, well, that's not really a big deal. But if you consistently see in more than one vendor the same thing, that's a sign that you need to know that. Uh, Erica, the main formulas. I like to put my formulas where I need them by subject area. Uh, but I don't know. You need to know the margin for sure. Market value minus debit equals equity. Um, I don't know what you mean by main formulas. Uh, I think every dump sheet should be different. So Erica, you can Google that and you can see other people's dump sheet and that can give you some ideas, but you should have your own if you're going to do it. Um, what else? I don't know. Current yield. Uh, I would hope that you wouldn't need the dump sheet for your formulas. I would hope that you had them, you know, in your brain housing group, so to speak. Uh, classical balance sheet equation, I would know. Um, uh, I'm just talking off the top of my head here. What you should do is... Uh, just think about that. Just go through your book. And every time you get a formula, you can ask about it. I think you sent me a question, Erica, about dividend payout ratio. I didn't explicate that and put it on the channel because I just don't think you're going to see dividend payout ratio on a seven. And then it had a crazy little quarterly thing. So, Erica, if you tell me you missed the seven because of dividend payout ratio, I'm going to say, eh, you had some bigger problems elsewhere. Dean, split your screen, please. Oh, sorry. There you go. <laughs> How many regulation questions? Well, you go to the test specifications, the PDF from FINRA. Uh, again, it's not enough to pass. The criti critical function, Erica, is providing investment advice, critical function three, 91 questions. So, you know, regulations is not going to make or break you. But uh, yeah, should you know 33? Yes. Should you know 34? Yes. Should you know, uh, you know, uh, not to sell dividends, prohibitive practices? Absolutely. That's fantastic, AXA. I don't think you're at risk. High 70s, low 80s, past five tests. Wow. Rinse and repeat, Perfect. rinse and repeat. Ready rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Locked and loaded. You say you don't do lectures, but it was stopping besides. I'm not sure able to understand the question. I do lectures. I'm not sure I understand the question. There's over 500 hours of videos of Dean doing <laughs> lectures. Uh, Paid lecture fees. I all the lectures that are on my channel are free. Uh, you know, but if somebody wants to pay me to come deliver lectures, I'm more than happy to do that. So I'm not quite sure I understand that question. Woohoo! Thank you so much, Nina. We've it's a crazy, crazy, crazy. The channel when I started, I had no idea. We're coming up, Nina, on two million views. Unbelievable. And we've got over sixteen thousand subscribers. And that's incredible, you know, because I don't ask people to subscribe. Uh, I don't ask you to smash the like button. I don't ask you to put on your notifications. The uh, reason I don't do that, Nina, is uh, as when I'm on a YouTube channel, I don't like it when somebody starts, you know, I don't even know them. I don't know what their channel is about. And then in 10 seconds, they're telling me to subscribe and smash the like button and set your bell. And, you know, I'm like, oh, my goodness. And you'll get a free coffee cup and T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, it's really been some right. We're closing in, Nina. Unbelievable on 400,000 watch hours. Uh, I just am, you know, shocked and I'm blessed. And what a blessing to have people like you spending that many hours watching those free lectures. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Thanks for the referrals. But I think the main thing that makes the channel grow is testing victories and referrals. I mean, it's not that complicated. People people like you, Nina, telling other people is what gets a rolling. Uh, very testable, Erica. Very testable. You have to be able to contrast an exchange-traded fund with an exchange-traded note. The exchange traded note is a debt instrument, Erica, and you have the risk that the sponsor, underwriter, or distributor can't pay you what they promised in terms of the reference indexed. So, you know, if the reference index is the Dow, whatever, I'll just make up my S&P and it goes up 36%, 100 grand, you have the risk that I'm actually going to credit your account for 136,000 and pay you. ETF is an equity instrument. There's a custodian and the assets are actually there. And so uh, very testable to be, understand the ETN as a debt instrument. Uh, would you add anything to that, Brian? Uh, ETF tracks the index, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, ETN, the risk of the principal at the end tied yeah. to equity. It's usually a suitability issue. Yeah, you I think so. 75-year-old fixed income investor doing an ETN. Uh, and Eric, I love what you said there versus because that's what you got to be able to do is compare and contrast different investments. The other thing that's very testable is to be able to contrast an open-end fund with an ETF as well. So how is an open-end fund different from a closed-end fund? How is an open-end fund different than an ETF? How is an ETF different from an ETN? That whole category is lots of test fodder. If you don't mind, I do how not. about this one I got from DBeef? 
Okay. Mutual fund versus variable annuity. Advantages and disadvantages. Well, I think, I don't know if it, your compliance would be upset, so don't repeat this to your compliance officer. Uh, I think of a variable annuity, Brian, as a mutual fund with an insurance wrapper. That's exactly and, what it is. And so the sub-account is the security component. I think of the separate account as the mutual fund. So when I get a variable annuity question, I'm just going to say mutual fund with insurance wrapper. And when they say 6,000 accumulation units, I'm just going to say 6,000 shares. Right. It's been my experience that most of the time those variable annuity questions are camouflage mutual fund questions or just the tax differences. So Erica, whether or not you need the money. So let's say you're in a open-end mutual fund in your personal account, Erica, and you tell the mutual fund, hey, I don't need the money right now. Whatever you were going to send me, just reinvest. This is very testable. That's called a dividend reinvestment program, a DRIP. Same with the capital gains. The IRS, Erica, says you could have had the money and that's the same as getting it. Now, in the variable annuity, they never, Erica, ask you, do you want the money? You must reinvest. Now, it sounds like a bad thing, but that's a good thing because that means that is going to grow tax deferred for you. And so that would be, I think, the major second contrasting point about that variable annuity is that you're going to have tax deferred growth. And that's why we call that a non-qualified retirement plan, meaning you're not using uh, pre-tax money. So I would expect a handful of questions, um, perhaps. Uh, I usually say not too many, but I've had people tell me four is more than four or five variable annuity. That's correct. Right? That's what I'm getting to. Okay. So I'll link uh, on 2138. What I do, in case you're new with us, is after we do the live stream, I go back and I timestamp it for our discussions so that you can find where Brian and I talked about head and shoulders or where we talked about uh, variable annuities. And then what I also do is there's a, a lecture available if it's one of Brian's free ones on his YouTube channel or one on my YouTube channel, I usually put a link so you can find a longer discussion if, if you're uh, so interested. Do one on the six year series 65, which I'm studying. Well, a couple things for 65s. Uh, as I just said, if you're, I think right now you're, it's the good season to be a 65 because there's lots of stuff for you. As we I told you, we're working on a six episode podcast right now. Our third episode is about to drop, and that'll drop tomorrow at 5 p.m. That's available to you. And then I had, uh, God bless uh, Chris, uh, we have sometimes people who buy tutoring sessions, and what they want to do is a shared screen final. And then what I ask them is, will they give me permission to put it on the channel? And sometimes, they, you know, sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no. In this case, Chris gave me permission. And, uh, you know, you can hit pause, but you can actually watch Chris and I spend two hours doing a Kaplan 65 practice final where he tells me his answer and I say, oh, that's stinking thinking, that doesn't work. Let's talk about what the right answer is, or hey, wonderful. And uh, sometimes people find those explications very helpful. And that's on the channel as well as Brian's fantastic 65 test geek. Remember that the thing about Brian's PDFs or the if on the channel, that has very strong correlation to what you're gonna do on the exam. So there's lots of stuff for you on the 65. Almost the challenge 65 is too much stuff. You know, there could be so much stuff that you can't really do that. You might want to watch the podcast just to get an idea of the landscape, the geography, the terroir, you know, whatever, again, in terms of 65. So lots of stuff for you. Lots of stuff for you. Brian and I both agree, uh, TV, that we think the 65 it can be the most challenging exam for a lot of test takers because it's a lot of stuff. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, discounted cash flow, definitely. Uh, not so much can you do discounted cash flow. But do you have a general understanding of that what I'm interested in is uh, seeing what these future income streams are worth to me today? That's what we do. We discount those income streams to come up with a number that we think is either attractive or not in terms of purchasing the bond or the stock. When we apply it to a stock, it's called dividend discount model. If it's a stock with a, gro a dividend, we call it dividend growth model. So mainly inputs and outputs. You got anything to add to that, uh, Brian? Depending on which test uh, 65 or 66 will also determine the depth of the question. Yeah. 65, one or two, 66, maybe as many as three to well, okay. four. But yeah, that's about it. Determining the fair market price based on future income. Yep. Yeah. Uh, GOs, uh, you should definitely know a GO versus a revenue bond. GOs are backed by taxing authority, revenue by user fees. Dean, that 
that list you talk about, put a line down the middle, list the characteristics of geos versus revenues. I'm telling you, that's going to get you, that's going to buy you quite a few points on this. Uh, yeah, so. By the way, there's certain things like that too, Brian. I always suggest that you have in your study area, right? So I would always have my, in my study area, either the FINRA content outline or NASA test specifications. So you can kind of orient yourself with your study provider and where you're at in there, how they've decided to organize material and kind of use that as an intellectual inventory that the fold in half, you know, uh, you have this as a resource, our community here, I would have like my, my, my list, my to-do list. I say it's whether it's tutoring, you have your Dean to-do list or what you want to bring up in the next community live stream or the live stream overtime session or the office hours. You're not alone on this stuff. So be proactive when you're studying, try and be really proactive. You know, uh, I'm always giving Erica kudos because she's proactive. You know, I, you know, I get worried if I don't hear from her. She's got a question. She emails me. I'm, I'm pretty good, particularly if you, you know, I'm, listen, I'm not saying I'm going to start emailing 16,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. But, <laughs> you know, if you're participating, I know who you are. You know, we'll, we'll try and work with you. Oh, Oscar, those scores hurt, man. They hurt. They hurt. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Oscar, I have a podcast episode. I'll link it 2611. And it's called, uh, you failed your exam. Is it over? And, uh, I will give you a spoiler alert. The answer is no. Uh, but, uh, you can watch that uh, thing. It's five steps you should take immediately after failing your mark, missing your mark. Right. And Step the number one is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I was just going to say, don't hide from it. I mean, you know, when people go dark, we know something's bad. So, you know, whoever's at the office or your significant other, you know, suck it up, get, get done with it. And then come up with a new plan and come up with a new plan. So watch that the episode. I'll link it in the uh, replay. So derivatives on your uh, 65 are not a big deal, but you should have a general understanding of options, you know, call on a put, you know, option to expiration. Uh, you maybe get a futures question. Uh, what do you think, Brian? Derivatives as it relates to 65. One to five. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's either very few or quite a few. Yeah. That's just what it seems to me. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. Basic, who's bullish, who's bearish? Your classic hedge question, right? Combining an option with a stock position. And then some of the characteristics like expiration and maybe one on intrinsic value. And that's it. Yeah, I, I think so. And the problem is we said on the 65. You know, I, listen, I apologize, but I can't think of a way to organize that thing. And the 65 playlist literally has like 92 videos in it. Because, you know, if it's options, I got to put the option video in there. And then I got to put the, and, you know, it's just tough. And uh, Brian, and I've been talking about it. You know, nobody really, even myself, we don't really test prep vendors. I call it the chunk theory. What they do is they just take the discussion they have from whatever and they move it over to the 65. I'm guilty. I guilty. You go on my 65 playlist, there's, there are unique videos to the 65, but then there's a lot of filler on, okay, you may see this, maybe you, maybe you don't, <laughs> you know, so it's a real challenge. 65 is a real, real challenge. Uh, what is the target for answers on your option exam and your content? Well, I, 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 I think she means score, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, so I, a great question. Well, I think it depends. I mean, on my, I have 44, I think Brian has 44 and I have like 50 and I have a whole options exam. I, I don't really consider my, like my hundred options exam to be something you score and feel good about. It's to expose you to the questions that you're going to get. Right. Uh, Cynthia, I think scores for, for, not for options, but should be based on practice tests, cumulative practice tests, not, you know, things you're extracting from that. For example, I had a guy today, he passed. Um, I was talking to him and he said that, uh, he really was hung up on, uh, advanced option strategies. And he finally decided that he was going to make an editorial decision and he wasn't going to spend any more time on it. I'm not suggesting you should do this, but he was going to make it up elsewhere. He said, okay, I got some other things I can do that I can, you know, get some points there. So I don't know. What do you think, Brian? Should do they, do we have targets for practice? Yeah, it's a classic 70% or better. I mean, yeah, this yeah. would be proficient enough passing the options section. Yeah, I uh, think so. Brian's option question. I use a lot of times, I'll use Brian's option practice exams and tutoring sessions because uh, a lot of times people have brought Brian's uh, content 
And uh, every time I do it, Brian, I go, ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> you know? So um, I like Brian's, uh, if you can hang with Brian's option questions, you can hang with the seven for sure. I think so. That's that's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we release a Mary every Wednesday, 5 p.m. Every Wednesday, 5 p.m. And you can find it on Spotify. And you can also find it here on the YouTube channel under podcast. And Brian has it on his YouTube channel under podcast as well. So every Wednesday, 5 p.m. Tomorrow's the third episode. Uh-oh. And uh, we got to get together Wednesday to do four, five, and six. <laughs> so. Regulation show, uh, research analyst for Series 10. I don't think a 10 would be supervising a research analyst. And then regulation show uh, would be more about identifying securities uh, before you sh short them. What do you think, Brian? Locate requirement? Anything? Yeah, well, plan? the research analyst, the first thing that it comes to mind, right, is that 24 question about can they attend the road show? Yeah. When we're know, is that related to show? Yeah, show? I know. No, they're different things. Show is about locate okay. requirements for short sales. Right. Um, I, I think, Eli, what I would tell you is I don't think there'd be many uh, research questions on the 10 because sales supervisors don't supervise research analysts. So I don't know whose content you're using, but uh, Eli, f feel free to email me uh, any QIDs or any questions you're looking at. And I'm more than happy to, to talk talk to you about them. I think the Series 10, Eli, I think this is, is a slog and it's mainly judgment questions. So it's not like aim and shoot point and click stuff. It's like Brian's like, you got a research analyst and they come over the wall with it's 24 or 10. So I think this is uh, your theory. It sounds like chunking from the 24 and throwing it. Could in be. Good big. It's definitely good. Abel, I'm not sure what you mean by why don't I do lectures? I don't know what you're talking about, Abel. So I apologize if they're misunderstanding. That's exactly what I do. I do narrative lectures. When I started my YouTube channel, people said nobody is going to spend an hour watching Dean do a lecture. Uh, and uh, they were wrong. Lots of people spend lots of hours watching Dean do lectures. So I'm not quite sure what you mean. If you go to the YouTube channel that you're on, I don't know if you're on YouTube or watching us from LinkedIn or Facebook. Uh, I'm not sure where you're watching us, but if you go to YouTube, uh, my channel, you can bring it up as a Dean Tenney or Series 7 Guru. You will see an entire playlist called, Are Your Vendor Lectures Not Working For You? And it's an entire playlist of Dean's lectures that you can use as an alternative if you don't like Tina or you don't like uh, Uncle Ray or you don't like any of the other people who do these things at other firms. Who's Uncle I'm, Ray? Uh, he's from Past Perfect. Okay. I know who Tina is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ali, what do you, uh, we're sending you good test vibes. You got it. So, you know, I don't like your emoji. The emoji should be more like I got it, not a, what is that emoji? Doesn't look like a confident test. Someone frightened, emoji. yeah. <laughs> uh, Abel, I'm getting to the point where I think you're a scam and I'm going to put you in timeout. So I'm not sure what's going on with you, Abel, but I'm getting very close to uh, putting you in timeout. Uh, I've listened to you guys nonstop. Oh, I love that, Allie. So hopefully we will find us helpful. I hope, Allie, this is a good thing, not a bad thing. I've had test takers tell me that when they're taking the test, they remember my voice. And one of the things I do, Brian, that people find incredibly rude is I go, eh, yeah. you know, not the right answer. So <laughs> I had some people testing together and they all went, eh, you know, or ding, 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 ding. Exactly. So hopefully you'll hear our voices uh, sending you good, positive test vibes. Uh, that depends on your firm, Nicole. So some firms are very good at processing you fours and other firms not so good. So this depends on your firm. Hola, Steve. Como esta? Como esta? Uh, any tips for keeping Fed and state regulations straight? I keep mixing them up on practice tests. Uh, Brian has a nice little box thing he does. What do you call that? Your cheat sheet or something? For persons? My yeah. Persons? yeah. Yeah. And you put the person in there, Mary, but uh, I don't have any tricks for the, the NASA exams. I think that's what makes NASA exams challenging. Uh, I was uh, doing some Vanguard 66 office hours today. And one of the things we were talking about is we don't have as many memory aids or tricks for those exams as we do for like the seven. We don't have like derp and silo and, you know, all those kind of things for you. Um, 
I think the biggest key thing is to keep in your head straight, whether you're being asked about a federally covered inve investment advisor and an investment advisor rep of either a federally covered advisor or state and investment advisor rep, rep from the state. So, uh, you know, that's the biggest thing. And I'll link, I have a very popular lecture called who's your daddy. And that's about who you, who do you belong to? You belong to the sec or the state. So I'll, I'll put that, uh, in the playlist, uh, for you on this. Uh, Brian, anything you would add? Is there, do you got any? Yes, I would. There's a lot I would add to this. Okay. So what, what do you got? <laughs> Too much uh, for the live stream or? Well, I think you and I both agree that the test predominantly tests on the USA. Yes. And not the federal laws. Some of the textbooks really seem to make it like a. 50 50. I totally agree. Kind with of thing. I don't think that issue is as prevalent on the real test where you have to say, oh, my God, is this federal law? Oh, my God, is this state law? I don't really think it really comes down to that on the real exam. Mary, the other thing what I tell people is, would I like you to know it all, federal and state? The answer is yes. But if you don't have enough brain capacity, do the state. The state is way more testable. So, right. you know, and I agree with you, Brian, like 1,200 versus 500. I would know the 500. Would I like you to know the 1,200? Yes. Yeah. But the 500 is more likely to be testable. Uh, margin, Jennifer, don't waste time on margin on the 24. Uh, margin is very basic on the 24. I would know debit by 0.75. I'd know market value at maintenance. That's market value maintenance long. I would know credit by 1.3. That's market value short. I would know, Jennifer, it's on every exam, the $2,000 trick, right? You buy less than 2,000, you pay in full. Between two grand and four grand, you pay two grand. It's the same 24 question as it is on the other exams. So I'm not worried at all about the margin. Uh, trading, I would definitely know limit order protection and have a handle on uh, the rules about what they're called Manning rules. So you definitely want to get to trading. The trading is way more important, Jennifer, than margin on your 24. Absolutely. Uh, discounted cash flow. I think we gave you an overview of discounted cash flow. Wow, that's uh, interesting. Uh, green shoe has been popping up, uh, Jake. Uh, the green shoe gives me the ability to expand an offering. So if I have a good client, I can say, yeah, you can have the stock and I'll exercise my green shoe to get that stock and I'll, uh, you know, short it. The uh, maximum I can expand the offering is uh, 15%. So green shoes have been showing up. I'm not sure what exam you're taking, but uh, Jennifer, that's also a 24 question about that green shoe. Uh, I'm not sure what you saw in the OTC link. I'd be interested, Jake. Uh, to put in the chat what you saw about the OTC link. Um, I don't, you have any, uh, James, uh, Brian, do you have for James any memory aid devices for investment companies? I don't have any, I have Dye 90 for like past. Uh, again, those of you who know me, I, I tend to be very visual. Yeah. So I list the four investment companies in a particular order because the first two characteristically are very, very similar. The UITs and the open ends, put a line across that then the closed ends and the ETFs. And we talk about the characteristics of each of them. Again, top two, very similar. Bottom two, very similar. So it's more of a visual thing okay. rather than kind of a cheat sheet. I guess you can turn it into a cheat sheet. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm not sure ETNs, I think ETN, if I'm a sponsor, I think I can leverage an ETN. So uh, I think the question would be open end, open end funds can't be purchased on margin. ETFs can. You can't short an open-end fund. You can short an ETF. ETNs, I think, you, you know, I don't know if anybody extends you credit on it, but it could be an ETN that has like a 2X leverage to it. So I'm not sure what, what the question is there. Yeah. Couple last couple weeks. Awesome. Uh, how many full finals, Wendy? Uh, I believe in, you know, that most people don't do enough of them. So... Uh, Brian and I uh, have in our first episode of our podcast for the uh, 65, uh, building a little study plan. And I think we both agree that you should reverse engineer from your test date. And I think we both think that between seven and 10 days from your test date yeah. would be the latest you should be doing a practice test. Correct. And that first one, we don't really score as care. It's about a mark just to finding out where you're at. Ideally, we would find out that you're in the 70 plus range and what you're doing is working. Now, from there, if I were your accountability partner, I would uh, negotiate that with you and they say, okay, so here's our first one. 
how many more we're going to do. I think you also should do one, uh, maybe Brian's the day before the day before, because I told you it has strong correlation, not to learn anything, just to have some confidence about what we should expect when you go in there. So I would want to see a master exam or Brian practice test final. The last one, maybe the day before the day before. So if you're testing Friday, maybe Wednesday. If you're confident, uh, maybe, uh, you know, if you're testing Friday, take Thursday off. Uh, I would say at least four. Would you think four would be? Uh, yeah. You yeah. know, Dean, you know, we get this question a lot. Yeah. And there's really no magic number to it. What is the magic part of it is the process that Dean is, ex is, is explaining. We use it as a benchmark and also to identify areas of remediation. And it's just re, uh, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Yeah. So you know, if you want to put a number to it, a minimum of three, dot, 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 depending where your time is, what your scores are, what your weak areas are, those sorts of things. It's really hard to come up with. Them. Yeah. The Wendy, the thing I would tell you is make sure this is a really bad mistake. Somebody, oh, I did three practice tests today. I think that's a total waste of your time. Exactly. Because right. that third one, you're just going to be tired. It's not any, it's not productive. So I would also add, Wendy, I would only want you to be doing one a day, yeah. max. Yeah. And spend some time afterwards, again, what we're talking about, finding your areas that you need to, to, to improve from that. So you should almost spend as much time going over that practice exam as you did taking it. What I mean by that is that I did in the morning. In the afternoon, I'd go over it and prepare, so you know, make your list of your weak areas, right? And then, we're, you know, take another one, right? So that's rinse and repeat, so to speak. But, uh, well, you know, there's people who give bad advice. And some of the bad advice, I think, Wendy, about this is there are some old school men and women who tell you, oh, just do all the practice tests. You don't need to read the book. You don't need to, you know, watch any videos, you know, just take a bunch of questions. And I just think that's terrible advice. And make sure you, Wendy, lay enough base knowledge. So I get a little bit aggravated, Wendy. You know, I have an entire playlist of practice questions. And I can tell when somebody hasn't laid enough base knowledge because of the, the nature of the question they're asking. Uh, you know, they're doing a Brian practice test, for example. And they'll say, oh, Brian got this question wrong, rather than like, well, maybe I don't I haven't laid enough base or I don't understand the question. And so, you know, you want to lay some base. And that's why we're saying reverse engineer it. You shouldn't start out your study ever with a practice file. You know, you should start by I'm going to lay base knowledge by reading and doing quizzes. And then you want to you know, say, OK, now it's time to find out how much base I have by taking a practice test. A lack of options. Every draw is different. Well, as long as you pass, <laughs> you know, as long as you pass, Ashton, Victoria's test taker. Thanks for joining us, Ashton. You don't have to take Brian and I's word for anything. We do have Victoria's test takers who pop in and are kind enough to share their testing victories. And uh, uh, I, you know, Brian thinks there's less options in math than I do. And uh, I think it's just depend on the draw. And I think there's about 20 questions. Brian thinks less. So it just depends on your draw. You know, and by the way, I would tell you, it's also how prepared you are. So I've, if you're not prepared for options, you're going to swear you had 125 of them. <laughs> we're not going to believe you, but that, you know that's it's going to be on your brain. And if you were prepared for them, then you say, "Oh, I don't know what the big deal was." So. I'm not sure what you mean, Nicole, about holding period for stock or options. It, it's the holding period isn't based on the investment; it's based on the tax consequences. So if I hold an investment, I'm at risk for more than 12 months. It's going to qualify for a long-term capital gain. The way I didn't call think about uh, taxes for options is T. The option contract can be traded. The option contract can be exercised. The option contract can expire. If we're trading, it's pretty simple. It's all short term. So if I do an opening purchase, opening sale, and I offset, that's going to be short term. It only gets tricky if I exercise. If I exercise the uh, option, for the most part, my cost basis follows my break even. The exception would be covered calls, but I think a lot of people get overkill on tax consequences of options. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's what you mean, stock versus options, but if it's option with a stock, it expires, it's a short-term gain or loss. So you bought it, loss, you sold it, gain. And the stock is pretty straightforward. More than 12 months long-term, less than that, it's uh, short-term. Might she be talking about the non-married put holding period? Well, again, again, I think test prep vendors get into it. Be, be careful what I said, mm -hmm. Nicole. You have to be at risk for more than 12 months. So if I own the stock and within 12 months I buy a protective put, I've interrupted the holding period because I'm no longer at risk because I have a choice to sell. 
Right. Now, if I buy the stock and buy the put at the same time, then and I make it more than 12 months, then it's it's long term. So uh, I don't know. I think the test prep vendors go go way overboard on cost basis of puts and stock and cover calls. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you won't fail due to margin for sure on the 24, Jennifer. There's there's no way if you you, you miss the mark on the 24, it was margin that did you in. Ashton's confirming he had three to four variable annuity questions. That kind of fits with what I would expect in terms of variable annuity questions on a seven. Yep. When trading is holding, well, it's pretty uh, aim and shoot point and click. We have three circuit breakers, 7%, 13%, and 20%. So the market goes, what's that? Who came up with those numbers? <laughs> yeah, there's no, no rhyme or reason. Are they just like random? A seven sounds good. Uh, yeah. yeah well, uh, what we do on 7%, Brandon, is we hold trading for 15 minutes. 13%, we hold trading for uh, 15 minutes. 20%, uh, we call it a day. So uh, be careful, Brandon. I mean, low probability, but you can still exercise your option. Uh, so when even if you were long a call or long a put, you could still exercise that even if we halted trading. Uh, I haven't had anybody tell me they've seen uh, Reg BI on 63. Have you, Brian, had anybody tell no. you they saw it? No, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good thing or a bad thing that we got Finn reminds. That might be like, uh, what's that thing that people who play football too long get? <laughs> Maybe that's it. Two great Finn reminds we are, Caesar is saying. I don't know whether to be complimented or offended by that. <laughs> yeah. A thin remind? I don't know. Uh, Nicole, in terms of value for a warrant would be after it was issued because remember the warrant was issued with a strike price above the exercise price. But uh, you know, what Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway had had a warrant to buy Bank of America at seven. And uh, you know, Bank of America at the time was six, and now Bank of America is 30. So the intrinsic value would be just like a stock. The intrinsic value of uh seven uh warrant with a strike price of seven with the stock at 30 is 23. So it's the same thing as uh, options. Yeah, Brian. When issued, warrants have no interest. That's right. They're very only testable that they're issued right. above. Right. Yeah. By the way, Nicole, that's also very testable because warrants is the only, or excuse me, rights, Nicole, test point, are the only ones that at issuance always have intrinsic value. Because remember, the subscription price is below the market price. And you definitely, Nicole, need to be able to contrast rights versus warrants. Rights are short-term, exercisable below at issuance. Warrants are long-term, exercisable above at issuance. So very testable. I love it. Your first testing victory. Woohoo! Uh, series 6, Melanie, I have a Thursday, a premiere of a Notman Series 6 exam that uh, I met, have explicated. I wanted Notman to give me a 65, you know, and they said, well, how about a six? And I go, well, I really want a 65 to tie into Brian and I's podcast and other things we're doing. And they gave me a six to do and I did it. So that'll be out there for, uh, Thursday for you. And our six playlist on the channel is that once again, you have uh, a Kaplan series six exam that I've done available to you. You have a, a Momentric series six, always the best uh, correlation one. You have a test geek six there. And now you'll have a Notman six there. So you have four good practice exams. We also, Melanie, if you want to, you, I'm more than happy to make you a moderator. I, I feel that the, the sixes kind of fall out of the mix. And so we do have a series set, uh, series uh, six Reddit. It doesn't have a much action right now because we just started it. Uh, but there's some six stuff there as well. I've got some stuff I've been posting to that Reddit. That's our series six. Yeah, Melanie, as I said, I'm trying to do more on the six. It's just I'm a one-man band, so, you know, I, I can't, haven't explicated the content outline. I feel like I haven't shown as much love, Melanie, to my sixes as we do other people on the channel. And part of that is just I'm sure that's why Nobman wants me to do a six. I don't think any of us have cracked the code on Series 6 and how many test takers are there and how we can help them. What do you think about Series 6, Brian? Is it just me or is there... Is it seem I, like there's not as many stuff out there for six? Well, for one, because they're not out there. You know, <laughs> no. for one, it's, no, 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 no. I, I'm getting quite a bit of six and sixty three yeah. activity on the website. Uh, the, the test is only, I say, only fifty questions. The content 
for a lack of a better term, is kind of stale. It's the same content over and over and over and over again. That content really hasn't changed. I think that's why we don't okay. give it as much love because yeah. it's just the same stuff. Yeah. Just a guess. Yeah, I love it. Positive vibes. You know, that's one thing about coming Tuesday, right? Get some positive vibes. Uh, yeah, you know, memorization's up to you. Uh, I think practical application of the margin formula would be more helpful. So should you know how to set up a margin account and then market to market? I would, I would as a test taker. And that means memorizing long market value minus debit equals equity. So be it. Uh, I, I tend to want to memorize things through, pra you know, doing practice questions. But uh, yeah, I would know that. I would know the classical short equation, short market value minus uh, short... Uh, excuse me, credit balance, my short market value equals equity. So I definitely know those. And the reason that's important, Wendy, is that you're not going to get many margin questions, but to do a setup and a mark to market, you got to know how to do that. And you, to do that, you got to have the, the margin equation. Uh, it depends, Nicole. Uh, OTC has to be on the OTC margin list to be marginable. I don't think you'll see that. Who's subject to the AMT? Uh, the alternative minimum tax is based on how much money you take, have, make, and how much deductions you take. It's a binary Erica suitability question. It's not who is subject to it. It's either yes or no. Are you subject to it? Yes or no. That's the test implication. The only test implication. If it's yes, then you need to know that tax-free income isn't tax-free to an investor subject to the AMT who buys either an industrial development revenue bond also known as a private activity bond or a public purpose non-essential bond known as a stadium. So it's not who's subject. It's based on my gross income. I take my deductions and then I say the U.S. government owes me 50 grand for being a citizen. They say, Dean, try it again using this alternative method. And they make me toss out preference items like my beautiful studio here in fabulous Las Vegas would not be deductible if I'm subject to the AMT. I just told you, Erica, a IDRs and public purpose, non-essential stadiums. Yeah, Tanya, I, you know, we can be fake ones here on Tuesdays <laughs> and we do the live stream. I don't know if you're in tonight's live stream overtime Zoom session, uh, but that would be another alternative. I've got that. That's at deantennytutoring.setmore.com. And you can certainly register for that. Oh, let me see where that's at. And that's another way to kind of get a kind of a community going. And uh, we have, a, I think for the most part, Erica's most uh, there most, a lot of times I'm there. So we do have a crowd there and then we have free office hours. That's, that's a, a type of community that we can act as your accountability partner. If you want to get active in those groups. Flashcards. I think flashcards are underrated, particularly making your own. So I know that a lot of people use Quizlet, and that's fine, but I really think you should make your own. Another thing I would have in my study area, Tanya, when I'm studying is a, a stack of blank 3 by 5 or 4 by 6 cards. And uh, I like flashcards for a couple of reasons. Another great use of flashcards is to get rid of significant others who are bothering you while you're studying. <laughs> you could say, hey, honey, can you run the flashcards with me? I might even have two sets. One I actually use to study. And one I use to get rid of significant others who are bothering me while I'm studying. <laughs> but for recognition style questions, Tanya, flashcards are wonderful. We have three styles of questions on the test. Recognition, practical application, and judgment. And flashcards are great for recognition. They're also great for, you know, we're talking about formulas. You could have like a current yield with an actual example of it that you can kind of use to extrapolate. You know, I would have like a, my own margin account that I'm an expert on. Anytime I got a, a margin account, I use my model to kind of set it up. So uh, I think that's great. Doing flashcards, I think, is great. Very low tech. Mo, no, multiple, I, I don't believe, David, in being monogamous. So should you recommend multiple test preps? Be careful of having too many voices. Uh, I think you should definitely buy the QBank. Uh, I don't think you should be frugal. and But I wouldn't buy everything. I wouldn't buy like STC and Kaplan and Pass Perfect and Achievable and you know, I would choose, uh, 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 you know, wisely because you don't want to get too much stuff, too many voices. My favorite paid supplement, David, here you go. No surprise. Is a Kaplan Q bank with Brian's test geek. Those two together will run you about 160 bucks, 60 bucks for the Kaplan Q bank with the 20% discount for Brian. 
that gives you a whole video series. It gives you another practice exam. And the Kaplan QBank gives you 3,600 questions. So, you know, all in, I think that's $160 well spent. Uh, I would think of it as an investment. I know not everybody has those resources, hence why my channel is free and I keep it free. I don't have channel memberships. I don't sell things. That's the other thing that came up today. Somebody asked me, Brian, where can they get my non-free stuff? <laughs> well, besides tutoring, I don't have anything that is, isn't free. Interesting. So, yeah, it's kind of weird. I, I feel like, what do you want to buy? <laughs> so, uh, I think you might have been confusing us because then I got another, I don't know if it's him because on Reddit, it's kind of, you know, you're, you're cloaked. And he uh, was asking about uh, the test geek. Who's that? And I said, oh, that's Brian. So you should definitely do that. And then he, uh, and he said he bought it. I don't know if he did or not. Yeah, six million, as we said. I do, I do, I, we, you know, I know it, that sixes don't get as much love as they should. Uh, you want to take this one, Ashley? 66 of her Ashley. Can you go over taxation on the estates once the grantor passes away? Um, I don't know what the tax, do you know what the tax consequence is? I don't, Brian. Would you know what the tax consequence would be? On estates. Yeah. Uh, isn't it the fair market value at date of death versus oh, is it six the same? months? There's no special thing. Okay. Yeah. For in most situations, Ashley, the, uh, it's going to be market value at the decedent's death. So, you know, if I buy Apple at a uh, thousand shares at 160, it's no different in the, uh, in the estate than it would be. I think oh, we'll do some homework and I'll let you know. As uh, long as it's paid nine yeah. months. And I think yeah. it's the trust. And, and, and that, I think that's what they're asking. Uh, the trust is what pays the taxes. Okay. Yeah. yeah the true who's responsible for the taxes is a different question. Yeah. Um, why did you, uh, my email is Dean Tenney, or excuse me, Dean, the series seven guru at gmail.com. Uh, why don't you send me or cut and paste it or give me some more information? I'll do some homework on that and I uh, get back to you. So just give me some more context of that and, uh, send it to that email. And I'm more than happy to do some homework and get back to you. Let's see where are we at. Does Brian have a 24? It's on the channel uh, there. We've explicated it, but he does sell his uh, additional. Yeah, go ahead. He's going to tell it, you that. It, he doesn't I, want I do to not sell it. a 24 PDF final. Yeah. I, I use my final as a study final. It's not okay. one that's actually graded. Okay. There you go. And he has the videos though, right? You have the videos for the 24? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer, hey, I, so this course, is true story, class. Jennifer. Yeah. Uh, Brian does have free stuff on his YouTube channel and, Somebody was struggling with buy-ins and closeout. And Brian has, I think, the best video ever For on sure. closeout and buy-ins. And I sent her over there. And my God, it, it was like she had a religious experience. She came <laughs> back and she was like, oh, my God. You know? I was like, wow, who would have meant that somebody could get so excited about well, the buy-ins buy and closeouts? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Well, they are. They can be kind of confusing. That's yeah, why yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like it, Cynthia. I like it. Keep us posted. Keep us posted. Uh, yeah, Wendy, I'm going to put some more classes up. I can't decide. Uh, Eric, I'd be interested in uh, overtime or Erica's still there. Um, uh, what you think? We should break that uh, into two lectures. Wendy, last time I did it, it was like two hours, which I think is a little much. So I'm thinking maybe next time we do a basic and then stock plus options. Abel, please. I'm going to put you back in timeout. I'm not sure why you keep asking me why I don't do lectures for 65. I do. I teach entire four day classes on 65. And I have no clue what you're talking about. So again, Abel, no more texts from you. You no more. If you need to talk to me, send me an email. Don't keep jamming up the chat about whether Dean's going to do lectures. <laughs> send me an email or next time you send a text to chat about a lecture, I'm going to ban you. All right. Uh, suggested time pacing? No, just make sure you can get it done in the time allocated, Wendy. I mean, uh, it is aggravating to me when people tell me they ran out of time on the actual exam. I mean, because you shouldn't do that because you should have done enough practices to know what the timing is. So, you know, make sure you are timing that. You are welcome. Okay, it's getting to, uh, close to our uh, hours coming up and it uh, looks like our pace is pretty go good. Uh, yeah, I like that. 66 daily on the treadmill. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, you know, yeah, Firms Vendors Kaplan uh, Vendor and the Kaplan QBank, I think it's great. I think you're going to find your points. Uh, any suggestions for what should go into our 
chat for the drawing for the coaching call. Uh, how, about, how about uh, let's do no lectures, no <laughs> lectures with no spaces. So let me, I got to get the giveaway tool. Don't do it yet. Don't put it in there yet. Cause I got to get the, uh, the thing up there. So no lectures. Dean does no lectures. Okay. So no lectures, all caps. Let me uh, get it on up there so you can see the drawing itself. Uh, let's see. I got to go back to StreamYard. I got to kill Brian and I. Whoop. Share screen. And there that is. Boom, boom. Uh, Brian, is that showing up? I see umbrellas. You see umbrellas. That's not bueno. Okay, hold on. Do, 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 do. Yeah, they're umbrellas. Yeah. Umbrellas. That's not what Multi -colored it was. Multi-colored umbrellas. Okay, let's try it again. Do, 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 do. Stop. Let me go back to the giveaway tool. Let me put it over here. Dean, you do this every week. I know. I don't know why I'm, I'm well, I, you know, I'm, I'm having troubles today. So what can I tell you? Yeah. Uh, you think I would uh, have this down by now. Uh, boom, start collecting comments. We have 10 entries. Okay, so that part's working. Good. So what's not working is me showing you the screen. So let me try that one more time. How about now? Do you see? There you go. All right. So there anybody else go. want to enter? We have 10 so far. Remember that my email is there. You win. If you win within uh, two hours, you got to claim uh, with your email, Dean, uh, the series seven guru at gmail.com. No lectures, all caps, no spaces. It doesn't matter if you put it in more than once. The giveaway tool uh, will only recognize Wendy. It'll only recognize it once. So you can put it in there a hundred times. It makes no difference in the drawing. Okay, 11, anybody else? We always have more people that, oh, by the way, you can assign it, uh, you can share it. So if you want to, you know, if you can't make it or, it's basically tutoring, but I don't wanna call it tutoring because I charge for tutoring and this is free. It's for any exam, we can do whatever you want. We can do slides, we can do practice questions together. We can- Will you uh, lecture? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> A 65 uh, lecture. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's the drawing. Da, 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 da. Erica, oh, woohoo! All right, woohoo! Uh, Erica and I will actually, because uh, I know how much you uh, like winning, uh, I will probably let you go over the uh, 30 minutes just because. How exciting. She's been, listen, for those of you who don't want to join us every week, uh, Erica is always hoping to win, and uh, I'm so happy for her that she uh, had won. Erica, you don't need to send me the email because I know who you are, so you can uh, just know it's Tuesday, by the way. And Erica, for you, we'll work it out. We'll do whatever you want. So uh, just don't make it a floating thing. I don't want to have a, a half hour I owe you for the rest of my life. I want to make good on it some point in the next week or so. All right, well, remember... Inch by inch, your exam is a cinch. Yard by yard, your exam is hard. Keep Brian, it simple. Stay with what you know. You take the test. Don't let the test take you. All right, everybody. I'll see those of you in the live stream uh, uh, overtime session 15 minutes from now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.